What's going on, everybody? Hope your day is going well. Today, we're going to the high-end cards and why, well, my theory, why most are dropping. And they're dropping it like it's hot. They're just going down in price. So, I'm going to hit some different pieces on to this. But first, we're going to show some of the high-end. This is going to be, uh, according to VCP, uh, Vintage Card Price Guide thing that's online. So, let me pull that up for everybody here. Oh, double click. My bad, my bad. All right, here we go. So we're going to go right here. And I got uh, the three major sports. No, I forgot baseball. But anyhow, I can tell you even vintage is slightly dipping. Some cards in vintage are still above where it needed to be even like a year ago. They've gone up still. But for majority of what I've been looking at and what I own and stuff, because with VCP, they send me price alerts all the time with all my stuff in my collections and I just watch it and, you know, I'll go on the graphs and look. So, this is nothing fancy like Card Ladder or that um, Jeff Wilson Market uh, Take All Your Money Mover stuff app thing. So, this here, Topps Chrome. So, if we look here, this is a three-year span. So, way back before COVID, look at this, 2300 2100 so basically 2000 to 2300 we started dipping into covid here started rising and doubling because people started buying these up my theory is all the smart people were buying these up because they had a plan in action and once we started hitting here into covid in july and them big spikes started taking off check it out they are buying this stuff here for two to four five thousand dollars Oh, well, let's start selling it now for ten, fifteen. We doubled our money moving to something else. Well, anyhow, we move up into here. Can you believe this? This stuff sold for forty-three thousand dollars. Now, we'll just go down to the last sales here. Six nine seven three six three six three. Those are all Junes, all right. And the way I look at this, I start batching this stuff together. Well, I can't go back any further. I don't think is there an arrow here. Yeah. Let me get a hundred of them. These things are plentiful now out there, trust me. It's a three year. All right. This should give me a better thing. All right. So look, in February, these cards, I'm going to ignore the 12.5 because I'm sure that wasn't paid for. Well, there was another one for 12 and 10. So somewhere around 9.5. Ten thousand dollars for the card in February. We're in June now, and they're realistically, if you start looking here in June, you got a lot of sevens. You got some that are even dipping in sixes. So LeBron stuff dropping. When he breaks Kareem's record, will they go up? To the LeBron faithful out there, they will. Um, somewhat, but if you just look at the spikes here on this stuff. It's just insane what happened with the whole uh, hobby out there. Let's go and look at his Topps Chrome Refractor here. I believe this is the Refractor. Yeah, 300000 All right. Oh, there it is. It said right there, Refractor. So, we look at the Refractor selling in January. 72, 78, 72. Now we're in the 50s. And we're talking low 50s, I would say average. 52, roughly, right here. I mean, it's just dropping in money. Can you see... That if you thought, you know, I'm going to buy this LeBron now, it's, you know, it's low. It's 78000 72000 Now all of a sudden you're down twenty grand. Woo! All right, we're going to move on to another one. Dan Marino. Kind of vintage in a way. Uh, very low pop con on a PSA 10 onto this. I know that. So recent sales, 4800 Pretty much... Kind of gone up and down with the spikes here when you look at these prices. 45, 45, 43. This is one of them rare ones. But when we look at this, pre-COVID, we'll go right here. Selling for about 1200 1300 all that stuff. We started dipping in COVID. Nobody was touching this stuff. And this is where I started talking about in June. 2600 and stuff like that. Then all of a sudden, by the end of the year, people started really getting into this stuff and drove it up almost to 10000 at one time. And you can see it's been finagling over here around the $5,000 mark, stuff like that there. 
This is probably one of the rare ones where you're probably looking median range, probably around 4700 for it, roughly. There's some ups and downs on to it. Jordan. Oh, boy, PSA 10 Jordans. Look at that. There's one there for 738 and that one for 840 Pre-COVID, about 40 grand for one, 35, 40 grand. Now you can see where the movie came out here. We did the price increase. Now they're up to the 50s, 90s, all that stuff. Then boom, way up there, big money. Now they're at 228. Now Jordan stuff, even Jordan stuff's not safe out there right now. I'm telling you. I've been picking stuff up cheap at Jordan because people just have them in bulk laying everywhere. I'm not buying anything graded though, but let's just take a look here. 280s. I think we can comfortably say we'll take out that 360. 285, two, or 288, 285, 288, 240, 288, 264. Now, 220s. That's just, you know, like I said, like a, about a five, six month span, maybe four. Big money coming down on a lot of this stuff here. So some people had had it and held it. It was like, huh, this is kind of odd. Some people sold it here at 7000 you know, or 70000 100000 whatever. If you were one of the people that sold it here for, you know, 400 plus thousand, you definitely made some money. You could buy two of them almost right now for that price. Insane. So... I know, we went over that part there, but I said, why is stuff going down? I'm not going to hit the recession piece of it and all that stuff because we've already talked that part there. We've talked about people moving away. These investors are now finding something else to get into. I don't know, maybe they're going back to sneakers, comics, coins, stamps, postcards. I don't know. I don't follow it all. Crypto's down, all that stuff. So what I can tell you is, a lot of people are like, well, who was buying these during this time frame? Some of them were people that were well off with money out there. You know, like Jeff Bezos might have bought one. I don't know. I'm just throwing names out there. Elon Musk. Those kind of people would have money like that. Mike Trout might have bought his own rookie card. I don't know. But for the majority, there were these companies going out there during right around this time here where it started spiking up and stuff. And they started thinking, let's buy these if people could own fractional stuff like stock markets. And like if a percentage of them, a certain percentage reach says they want to sell it for this price, they, then we get the sale, we get our little commission, they get their kickback, you know, all that good stuff. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is just one. It's nothing bad about collectible or anything like that. It's just the one I always know about. I mean, you had block packs that was, you know, doing something similar to this, but theirs was more of like... Winner takes all Raz, but like you could get packs for getting into and owning like fractionals of certain cards too. But there's probably more out there like this. I can't remember them all. Collectibles just the one that always pops up for me every which way. But here you could own a piece of this stuff. So what happened is here is all of a sudden now we start taking these out of circulation now until somebody big wants to get into them again. And that's why all the big stuff started getting bought up by these guys. So people that were new coming in, whether they were investors or whatever, started having to pay a bigger premium on to it because supply and demand all over again. But a big part of it is where a lot of this stuff vanished to was to these places that you could own a fraction of the car. You'd be like, I own, you know... 0.0035% of a Michael Jordan PSA 10 rookie. You never get to hold it, but you can say you do. But just stuff like this here came about, which pulled a lot of the bigger card sales in. Do I still think there's big card sales going on? Yes, but not like it was a year or two years ago. Even at the shows I go to, I mean, realistically, I stopped bringing big, big cards over five grand out with me because realistically, they weren't going to sell and people just wanted to sit there and talk and try to throw offers out, not knowing they can't buy it. It's just one of those things that was going on. But, you know, shows 1000 1500 2000 2500 for a card was pretty common. Now, I think we're back down into the hundreds for cards where prior, I think... You know, guys would spend 40, 50 bucks on a card, no problem. Then it, you know, pushed up in the hundreds, then the thousands real quick. Shows came back. 
You know, everybody had to get their itch. They had money burning in their pockets, stuff like that there. But a lot of it has to do with during a time frame of, you know, production was uh, went backwards because of COVID. So hit times for releases went blah, you know, out there. And, I mean, even breakers were, you know, like, I can't wait for new product to come. I'm tired of you know, rebuying back in. At the same time frame, you had people that weren't allowed to do shows. Cities, towns canceling them due to COVID. Then all of a sudden they pop back up. And as you'll see, other things will start dropping. But a lot of stuff here is going to dip still in prices. And this high end's the worst thing of all. Because you have more money wrapped into one card. So you're going to see that bigger effect at once. Versus if I own... 50 like $300 cards and they drop down 10 20 bucks, you know, okay I'm down a little bit of money. We'll just say I'm just gonna throw out uh, was a thousand dollars if they dropped 20 bucks Where uh, if I would have taken that money and put it into something else I could go down half in price due to pop counts and everything else That's why I was saying, you know over a year well over a year ago now probably a year and a half ago Be careful what you're getting yourself into because it could come back to bite you in the long run. And it's starting to bite some people in the long run now. But I even know... Well, I know from just talking to people when went up to the monster. Not a lot of people seen or heard of big high-end sales. There Were there trades? Yes. Was there probably trades in cash? Yes. But nobody just came in there and said, I want that Steph Curry NT RPA for $60,000. i am just throwing a price out there. Whatever they're going for and stuff like that. Or they're like, oh, wow, Zion, you know, NT, uh, rookie. Yeah, I'll pay 80000 or whatever they're going for now. 40000 for it. I think that it's going to simmer down them big ones like that there. And what I have noticed, and you guys that go to shows and do a lot of transactions too, let me know if I'm wrong with this. But I've seen a lot of guys with the bigger cards trading down. Not so much as the guys coming in with the smaller cards always want to trade up, but guys that have bigger cards are like, you know, I'm just going to throw it out. Like, say they have somebody has this Jordan rookie here at a 10 at a show. They're going to try, they know it's worth 230 They're going to try to get like four cards worth about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a piece for it because now they can, you know, if one goes down and the other three stay stable, it's a lot better than having like a Jordan that keeps dipping down. But that's basically a good reason what I think is going on out there. Again, my opinion only is that a lot of the big spenders have moved away from this. Some people have their stuff locked up in vaults, whether it's PWCC. I don't know if Probstein does it. I know eBay now does it. Stuff like that out there. And also just that, you know, people that were in a prior to COVID just aren't going to spend crazy money on that car to get it back right now. Especially if you sold a Jordan, say for 500,000, I think you still give it a little bit more time. It's going to dip below 200. You could probably pick two up, then go buy something else too yet. But all right, guys, just want to hit something real quick like this out there. Um, to me, no card is safe out there. I started looking at some vintage now, Vintage, of course, didn't really take a big, big hit, but I, I moved it to the last six months, and some Vintage has dropped a little bit, but still, to me, what I call safe, for me. Uh, there's some Vintage that's gone up, there's some cards that have gone up, but most high ends have really taken a tumble here. So, let me know what you guys think offhand. Maybe I'm just seeing things, you know, through that tunnel vision. And I'm just not seeing the big picture out there. But I'm always curious to see what everybody's opinions are on this. It's just, like I said, mine offhand. Other than that, you guys take care. Have a good one. Catch y'all next video.